Um, we are going to today talk about fix it up reading strategies. So what is something, why would you fix something? What does something have to be in order for you to fix it? It's broken, it's, broken, it's a mistake, it's run down, right? Like a house would be run down, you've got to fix it up, right? Right, so we are going to do fix it up reading strategies, which means we're fixing up our reading. Sometimes we don't understand what we've read. How many of you have ever taken a quiz in reading and you're like, I did awesome on that. And then you get it back and you got a way worse grade than you thought, right? And you're like, wait a minute, I understood everything I read, right? But obviously you didn't. These strategies are gonna help you monitor what you understand. It's a monitoring your comprehension. Comprehension is what you understand. So these strategies not only help you if you are struggling, everybody knows if, you're, if you have a hard time reading something, right? That's obvious. But sometimes we think we know what we're reading because our fluency is good, which means we can read the words easily, but our comprehension, our understanding is what we struggle with, but we don't know that. So this is a way to monitor, to make sure that we really understand what it is that we are reading. And that's what's so important, all right? So we're gonna talk about these different strategies today. I'm gonna explain some of them to you. You're gonna copy them down in your, write, or your reader's notebook. And then we're gonna practice them. Not today, don't worry. We're just gonna talk about them today. And then we're gonna practice them though throughout the rest of the grading period and through the rest of the year, really, because these are things that will carry on with you the entire, your entire life. I do some of these things when I read, all right? So make sure you all have fix up reading strategies written down. And I am going to just kind of reveal them one at a time. I have Mr. Jones's head here because I thought it would be easy just to move this, but probably not until I have to retape it. It's all right. Okay, so our first one is very simple. Reread it. Reread what you read. How many of you have watched the same movie more than once? Oh. How many of you watched the same movie like two or three times? Yeah. Right? Yeah, look, I usually Wait. don't. I usually don't watch the same movie more than once because I don't like to, but that's just me. But anyways, so yeah, you watch the same movie more than one time. And then how many of you, when you've watched that movie the second or third time, you go back and you're like, oh, I didn't realize that before. I didn't, uh, that's why that director was sneaky, right? They gave us little clues of what was gonna happen that I didn't notice before. Same thing when you read. Now, I'm not saying to wait until you've read an entire book and then go back and reread it. Nobody wants to read the novel twice, right? especially if it's a boring one that you have to read for school. You're not gonna wanna read the whole thing twice. But you can reread. When you get to the bottom of a passage, think to yourself, did I understand what I just read? Can I summarize it? Can I retell what I just read? If not, I better go back and reread it, okay? That is a strategy that works and it's very, very simple. Just reread it. Try it again, all right? Okay, second one. Kind of goes with that. Oh, this is not gonna work as well as I thought it would. The second one is to read ahead a little bit. Oh, yesterday I was a hot mess, so it, you guys should be lucky. Okay, so the next one is to read ahead a little bit. Just keep reading. Kind of like Dory, just keep swimming, right? Just keep reading. But not the whole book. Don't wait until you get to the end of the book and be like, I didn't understand any of that. Then it's too late, right? So when you get to the end of a page, a paragraph, a chapter, then that should start making sense. Sometimes things are confusing because you haven't connected all the dots yet. But if you read just a little bit further, all those things start to make sense. You start connecting the dots, okay? So sometimes you just need to read ahead a little bit. If that doesn't work, go back and try rereading it. Read ahead a little bit, 
I still don't understand it, I'm gonna read it again. So you can use more than one strategy together. Read it out loud. How, I cannot tell you as a teacher how many times I have had students come back to me and they hand me a paper, and they're like, Mrs. I, I don't understand this. I'm like, okay. So I start reading the directions, and they're like, oh. That's me. I'm oh, I get it now. <laughs> Duh, right? How many, yeah, it happens all the time. You just need to hear it out loud. There's, now, I say this, but you, you cannot be in the middle of NWA or iLearn and start saying, once upon a time, there was a prince and a princess who lived in a castle, right? You can't start reading loudly. to yourself helps too. Now you don't want to whisper the entire time because someone might be like awesome right? Like I'll need to be quiet, right? Like if you're whispering the whole time, I'm gonna sound really, really aggressive. Someone might throw their pencil at you or something, who knows, right? Like nobody wants to hear that the whole time. But when you're at home, you can easily read aloud to yourself. You can have a parent or a sibling help you read and they can read it out loud to you. So read it out loud. Sometimes you just have to read it out loud because your different parts of your brain work when you are reading the words and saying them with your mouth than when you are just saying them in your head. So activating that different part of your brain can be really helpful. So sometimes you read ahead a little bit, it doesn't make sense, so you go back and you reread it, but while you reread it, you read it out loud. So you're using more than one strategy to help you. Use context clues. Now, I say use context clues. How many of you have heard of context clues? Does that sound familiar? It should. I know you've used that word in fifth grade, right? How many of you actually know what it means when a teacher says use context clues? Oh, yeah. Use clues from the text. Yeah, good. Use clues from the text. A lot of times, teachers will say, well, use context clues, and you're like, okay, but then you don't really know what that means, right? In social studies, it's obvious. If a word is in yellow, oftentimes the definition will follow that word. That's a context clue, right? So if it says um, the economy, comma, an economy is the system of how monetary value is determined, right, in a country, or whatever the case may be. You have that definition right after it. The context clue is obvious. Sometimes though, in books, in novels, in fiction, the context clue is not so obvious. So you really have to investigate and look all around for phrases and things like that, especially for words. Sometimes you can get the meaning of the word by how the character says it or what the character says. If the character says something that sounds like they're scared, you might not know what the word means, but you can tell it probably means scared because of, how they're, of what they're saying. Does that make sense? But when in doubt and context clues aren't working, this is my favorite one. Look it up. Just look it up. Look up the word. There is nothing wrong with looking it up. I am a Googler. I am a self-proclaimed Googler. All right, I Google things all the time. If I don't know what the definition of a word is, I Google it sometimes. I look it up. You guys are lucky. Back in my day, I had to walk over, I had to get out of my seat. I know, crazy, right? Walk over to a bookcase, pick up a dictionary, thumb through it alphabetically to try to find the word that I was looking for. You guys can find the definition in five seconds. Hey Siri, what does blah, blah, blah mean? Right? And it'll tell you. Or in Google, you can type define and the word, and it gives it to you. Or if you're reading a book about an event or a place you've never heard of, look it up. I love looking things up. I look things up all the time. My husband and I will be having a conversation about something, and I will look up what we're talking about. Or I'll look something up and be like, oh my gosh, look at this. Right? You cannot look things up on NWA and iLearn and things like that. But that's, those are different, those are standardized tests. Life is not a standardized test, okay? Yes, you need to do well on them, but there are times where looking things up, you guys have these mini computers called cell phones with you almost all the time. Use them for academic purposes. We're gonna talk about how to use Google 
academically. A lot of you guys use it for fun and you're awesome at looking things up, things that you probably shouldn't be looking up sometimes. You're <laughs> awesome at using YouTube. You're awesome at using all of those things, but not for academic purposes. So we're gonna learn how to use Google effectively and efficiently for academic purposes, not just for fun, okay? But looking things up. Slow down, slow down. Sound like something that some of you might need to do? Mm -hmm. I think this is the number one strategy that if some of you just started to do this, you would notice a huge difference. This is what I envision. Tell me how, tell me how close I am. Let's see, you guys come to school, today's Thursday, right? Yeah. So you came to school, let's say it's a Tuesday. You don't have school on Wednesday. So you go to your room and you decide to jump on your gaming system and you play that for a little bit and you talk to somebody and before you realize it, it's no longer 10 o'clock, it's now 11. And then you decide to look at some TikTok videos and then someone Snapchats you, so you start doing that. And then they decide to face chat you or FaceTime you or group chat you or whatever the case may be. So you talk with your people through that and then you get onto Instagram because you have some video call through Instagram and then you realize it's now midnight. Well, it's not that late really because you don't even have to wake up early in the next day because there's no school. So you're gonna play your game for a little bit longer or you're gonna start looking at more TikTok videos and before you realize it, it's 2.30 in the morning because you went down a TikTok hole, right? And you've been there for way longer than you thought you should be or you've been playing your game way longer than you thought you should be. And then you're gonna watch some Netflix to fall asleep. Well, you get stuck on like episode number 10 because you started at the beginning and it's so interesting. <laughs> Finally, you fall asleep. You decide to roll out of bed around noon and now you're starving because, well, you're teenagers and you're always hungry. So you decide to go get something to eat and now you realize it is 1, 1 1.30. Still haven't showered, you should probably take a shower. So you jump in the shower, hopefully. Get out of the shower, it's now two o'clock. Oh my gosh, my mom's gonna be home at four and ask me if I did my e-learning and I sure did nothing because I slept in and I took a shower and then I ate and then I watched Netflix and got back on my social media to check. Oh, I had to take pictures of the ceiling and the floor and the wall and everything else for my Snapchat streak, right? So now I better hurry up and get my e-learning done before I get in trouble. So you jump on your canvas, you click on your course and you go to modules because that's what you're supposed to do. You hurry up and you read through everything. You type something up really quick and you submit it because you know what, it's done. So your parents are like, did I do, did you do your canvas? And you're like, I sure did. Look, it's been submitted. And they're like, great, good job. And they don't know because they were busy at work. They don't know what you just did. And you're like, ah, I did my canvas, but you sure didn't do it slowly, did you? You didn't take your time. You didn't slow down to make sure it's done correctly. You just did it so you didn't get in trouble because you don't like e-learning. Right? Does that sound familiar to anybody at yeah, all? Yeah, kind of like me. Yeah, right? Me. Yeah, some of you are like, oh my gosh, she had like a camera in my house, right? Okay, sound familiar? I didn't, but that's what, I get it, I do. I understand, I guarantee when I go text my daughter during prep and I ask her, are you on doing your e-learning? She's gonna be like, uh, yeah, right? No. Like, unfortunately for her, I, and link to her canvas and I know how to use it. So there's no hiding, right? But, no. but seriously, like guys, you got to slow down and try. I know it's not ideal. I get it. I get some of you don't like to read. I get all of that, but you have to slow down. You have to slow down and try. If you did that, it would make the biggest difference. Another scenario for you, NWA or Island time. Yay. Right? Yeah. So you know it's not timed. So you're like, you know what? I'm going to do well. I am going to do well on NWEA because I want to be in good classes and I want to be in the lower group or whatever the case may be. Or I learn, I want to do well. Thank you. I'm going to do well, right? I'm going to do really well on this. So you try and you feel like you've been working for an hour and a half to two hours and you look at the clock and it's been 20 minutes mm -hmm. and you're like, uh huh. Uh, I'm on question 10. And then you finally get to like question 23 and you're like, yes, I've gotta be almost done. And then your teacher's like, oh, there's about 45 questions. 
And then you think to yourself, I'm not even halfway done. I've been working for 45 minutes. I'm over it. And then you think to yourself, you know what? I tried at least for the first half. So that means I got to have gotten a better score. So since I tried so hard the first half, I don't have to try as hard the second half. I'm just going to get it done and finished because I just want to put my head down and take a nap. And so that's what you do. You don't slow down. You don't keep working hard. Instead, you just rush to get it done. Okay, that's what a lot of you do. Guys, again, see what I'm saying? Like, I was, I've been doing this for a while. I, can, I get it, I understand what you're thinking, but you have to slow down. And I cannot emphasize this enough. Yes, rereading things, but if you slow down, if you slow down, you'll be able to use context clues. If you slow down, you might not have to reread it, or you will only have to reread a part of it. Not the whole thing, right? Okay, using text and graphic features, that's more for nonfiction. I know Mr. Jones has talked about text and graphic features in social studies. So I know he has mentioned looking at pictures, bold words, titles, captions, um, things that are highlighted, graphs, all of those things, right? So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with text and graphic features because that's mainly nonfiction. And I know that you guys have went over that with Mr. Jones. Oh my gosh, I am struggling. Sorry, I was a hot mess yesterday. Yesterday was rough. Today is better, to be honest. Yesterday I had two cups of coffee by this time. I couldn't decide on, I didn't decide, but I couldn't decide what I wanted at Starbucks, so I had two Starbucks coffees. And so by this time yesterday, I was on my second one, and I was, I was all over the place. All right, ask questions. Talk to yourself. Guys, I talk to myself when I read all the time. All the time. All right? And I answer myself sometimes too. What? I just do it in my head so nobody knows. No, but seriously, talk to yourself. How many times when you're reading, do you read an entire page and then you say, I just read that? I don't even remember a single thing I just read. Uh -huh. Right? Because you are reading and then you're like, oh, what's that person doing? Oh, someone's tapping their pencil. Oh, there's a bee over there. Oh, there's a fly over there. Oh, there's a fly. Right? You're all, you're all over the place. And by the time you get to the end, you're like, I just read that whole page. I don't remember what I read. But if you are talking to yourself, if you're asking yourself questions while you read, it's going to keep you focused. This is your reading voice. We've talked about reading voice and thinking voice. This is your reading voice. So as you're reading a text, you're saying to yourself, oh, you're making connections. If I was the character, I would do this. Oh, why did they do that? I wouldn't do that. Where do I, where are they going? Oh, that may, I did that in my real life before, right? You're using your steps, you're visualizing, you're questioning, you're making synthesis, which wherever I have synthesizing poster, it's over there, right? You're doing all of those things. You're talking to yourself as you read. The last thing is to stop and think. Stop and think. Just every once in a while when you're reading, stop and think about what you just read. Just stop. Just stop reading and think, what did I just read? Okay? So some strategies we have practiced in class are here in pink. Why lighting is something that you did last year. Um, I'm going to do something a little different with you guys on that this year because we are so digital, everything is digital, that it's hard to do. That's easy to do on paper, but all of our tests are on computer and things like that. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to do it. Post-it notes. We did this in Lightning Thief. You remember at the end of a chapter, we or at the end of each page, I'm sorry, we wrote a post-it note, what happened on that page. And at the end of the chapter, we had a summary of what happened because that's the way you monitored your comprehension. Did you understand what you read on that page? And then you summarize it with one sentence. And then by the end, you have six, seven post-it notes so that you can make sure you understood what you just read. Take notes on any standardized test, NWA, iLearn, whatever. You can take notes over what you've read. This is helpful to make sure you're stopping and thinking, you're talking to yourself, it helps you slow down, right? So by taking notes, it helps you do some of these things. So
So we're gonna, we've done notes, we've done T notes and things like that, but we're gonna practice some versions of how to take good notes while you're reading, especially some of that academic reading that you do on tests. And the last one is to use all five steps. So making an inference, we've talked about the five steps of making an inference a lot, haven't we? And we've practiced retell a lot, but that retell chart is so helpful. Again, if you need to go back and rewatch the lessons, I taught on those, they're on Canvas, right? The Canvas YouTube links are all the lessons on me teaching how to do those things. You should be doing all of those things all the time when you read. That's your thinking voice. So this is in your reader's notebook. We are going to practice all of these things. We're gonna practice monitoring our comprehension and all of that as we continue forward. Okay, any questions? All right, Pollyanna, can you stop it, please? Okay, 